Number 15. Your city may end up there one day. I'm sure the Egyptians never imagined their city of Heracline would end up underwater in some distant future. Despite the fact that we often build cities on picturesque coasts, as Heracline was built near the canopic mouth of the Nile, not many of us expect an entire civilization to end up buried by the ocean. The city's ruins are now situated in their watery graveyard. 2.5 kilometers off the coast in Abu Kir Bay, 30 feet below the water's surface, the ancient city was legendary in its time. Around the 12th century BC, noted by Greek historians, Heracolon served as Egypt's main port during the late period. Tax collecting and international trade occurred here, and it was even a brief safe harbor for the fleeing Paris and Helen of Troy, who were escaping Menaclaus prior to the Trojan War. The Temple of Khonsu, known as Heracles to the Greeks, was a notable monument in the city and now lies underwater, as do many of the city's artifacts after it sank around the 3rd century AD. It is theorized that the stilts on which the city was built liquefied after experiencing some earth tremors. Imagine your future city beneath the ocean. Does it give you the chills? Number 14. The Goblin Shark Gobbles Up His Prey This monster is a living fossil. Some biologists call it that because it's the only living representative of a 125 million year old family lineage. Its other name, the Goblin Shark, doesn't paint a prettier picture. And it shouldn't. The name is translated from its old Japanese name, Tengu Zame. Tengus were mythical creatures in Japan with red faces and long noses. This scary ocean dweller generally runs between 10 and 13 feet long, although much larger goblins of this species have been sighted. It has pink skin, short fins, and a big flabby body, a flat elongated snout, and very protrusive jaws with jutting teeth like nails. You often find them in sea mounts around the globe at 330 foot depths. Juveniles usually swim higher than adult goblin sharks, however. The goblin is slower moving by nature, but it still manages to swipe up some crustaceans, cephalopods, and teleost fish that reside on the ocean floor. It does this though the ampulla of Lorenzini on its elongated snout, which allows it to sense its prey's electric fields and quickly nab them with its dramatically extending jaws. This long, flat snout looks like a sword blade, and the goblin's small eyes are membraneless, leaving a vacant look on its creepy face. Though the jaws are often held against the head's underside, they can extend to nearly the end of the snout when feeding, with up to 62 lower teeth rows and 53 upper teeth rows. That doesn't make for a pretty smile. Why so many rows of teeth? Well, the rear teeth are small and flat, used for crushing, while the main rows are long and narrow, used to attack. And what are they eating with these hundreds of teeth? Rat teals and dragonfish mainly, as well as other deep-dwelling teleosts. This species is also sluggish, with poorly developed muscle blocks and reductive calification in its skeleton. The shark's fins as well are small and soft with a long caldal fin angled low which is indicative of slow swimming. At least if you swim into one of these creepos in the middle of the ocean, he's not likely to catch up with you when you tear away in horror. Number 13. Plastic will soon outnumber fish. Dame Ellen MacArthur, a sailor who has broken records, including sailing the Kingfisher from Plymouth, UK to Newport, Rhode Island, USA in a little under 15 days, is now an advocate for cleaning up ocean pollution. She knows firsthand the volume of human waste found in the sea, and the statistics aren't pretty. The foundation named after MacArthur reported that new plastics will consume 20% of all oil production within 35 years, up from an estimated 5% today. The amount of plastic pollution in the ocean is 20 times as much as in 1964, 300 metric tons in 2014 alone. In the next 20 years, the amount is expected to double, and by 2050, double again. Soon our oceans will be an ocean of plastic, and yet we aren't really doing anything about it. A mere 5% of plastics are recycled each year, while 40% arrive at landfills. As for our oceans, they collect a third of this litter. The rest is burned, but more and more plastic is made every day in order to satisfy our consumer products. The imagery gets even scarier. According to the report, at least 8 metric tons of plastics leak into the ocean, which is equivalent to dumping the contents of one garbage truck into the ocean every minute. If no action is taken, this is expected to increase to 2 per minute by 2030 and 4 per minute by 2050. In a business-as-usual scenario, 
The ocean is expected to contain one ton of plastic for every three tons of fish by 2025, and by 2050, more plastics than fish by weight. The plastic can serve a death sentence to sea turtles and seals. While most tiny bits float to the ocean's bottom, the impact of which is unknown, these issues remain unaddressed, as recycling systems aren't efficient and consumption of plastic are at an all-time high. It's truly frightening to imagine our ocean's future when a problem this serious is being ignored, not only ignored, but exasperated. Goodbye oceans. Number 12. Box jellyfish or death traps. Unless you've been stung by a jellyfish, you might find the floaty glowing creature quite hypnotizing, even beautiful. But the box jellyfish should not be revered, it should be feared. Certain species of box jellyfish release fatally potent venom. One sting from this glowing creature is very painful and can even be deadly. The box jellyfish has a square boxy-like bell shape with short stalks hanging from each of its four corners, out of which reach long, thin, hollow tentacles. It floats via its shelf-like valerium, which helps to propel it using strong jet stream helping it reach speeds of up to 6 meters per minute. The nervous system of the box jellyfish is more complex than most, with 20 simple eyes called ocelli, which detect darkness and light, as well as 4 normal eyes as well that capture images. The most dangerous species of box jellyfish lies in the Indo-Pacific region, and its venom is used to defend itself from predators, like crabs, sea turtles, and various fish, as well as to attack prey but they don't generally hunt man, rather they hunt small fish. Still, they have caused 64 deaths since the first reported death in 1883, with their venom resulting in cardiovascular collapse within 2-5 to five minutes, just when you thought it was safe to go back in the water. Number 11. This Barrel Eye Spook Fish Lives There The name Spook Fish says it all, also known as the Barrel Eye. This small deep sea fish storms the tropical waters of the Indian, Atlantic, and Pacific Oceans. The fish's tubular, telescopic eyes, directed upwards to spot its prey, are what give these demon fish their name. The eyes protrude from the head and are encapsulated in a big transparent soft tissue dome. So if the eyes are truly the windows to the soul, this fish's soul is transparent. Its bioluminescent organs, alongside their reflective souls, may form a sort of counter-illumination that serves as camouflage for these spooky fish. It's safe to say you wouldn't want to meet one of these buggers in the depths of the ocean. Number 10. Half-Ton Squid Haunts the Ocean Floors Thinking about taking a swim with a giant squid? Then head down under, where a fishing crew in New Zealand has found a real-life half-ton squid that could be a record-setting catch at 990 pounds and 39 feet long. The crew were catching Chilean sea bass, or Patagonian toothfish, when they hooked the colossal squid, which had been eating one of their toothfish on their net. The beast was caught in the waters of the Antarctic, and it took them two hours to reel him in. New Zealand Fisheries Minister Jim Anderton said, The squid was almost dead when it reached the surface, and the careful work of the crew was paramount in getting the species aboard in good condition. It is likely that the first intact adult male colossal squid to ever be successfully landed. It's estimated that the beast is 333 pounds heavier than the previous record-setting squid. An Auckland University of Technology squid expert, Steve O'Shea, said that calamari rings made from the squid would be the size of tractor tires. The deep ocean colossal squid grows up to 46 feet in length, has eyes as big as dinner plates, and is known to be an extremely active hunter. Number 9. The ocean boasts mountain ranges longer than any above sea level. The mid-ocean ridge is the longest mountain range in the world, but you'll likely never see 90% of it, as it lies beneath the ocean. The 40,389-mile mountain range is formed by plate tectonics, resulting in mountain chains with valleys called rifts running the lengths of its spine. As most science geeks know, the oceanic mountain range results from seafloor spreading, which is when new seafloor is created from the upwelling of mantle from plate spreading. The mantle eventually melts, rising as magma in the oceanic crust. 
It then produces as lava and cools, creating new crust. This is why mid-ocean ridges are geologically active areas, routinely erupting with thousands of individual volcanoes. Fresh magma consistently flows onto the floor of the ocean and crystallizes to form new crust. In this way, the ocean floor is like a snake shedding its skin. It's in a constant state of renewal. Despite the fact that most oceanic crust is around 200 million years old, it's scary what we think we know about the world when we really know nothing. Number 8. Phytoplankton are on the decline This may not seem scary to you, but phytoplankton are the self-feeding purveyors of the ocean and are key to the balancing act of its delicate ecosystem. Phytoplankton likely appear insignificant due to their teeny tiny size. Most are too small to be seen with the naked eye, but if you've ever gone scuba diving or snorkeling, you may have noticed them without even realizing what they were because when they congregate in high volumes, they are often remarked as color patches on the water's surface, a resulting of the chlorophyll and pigments of some species. In 2010, a study reported that the past century has seen a substantial decline in this vital marine species, around a 40% decline since 1950 to be exact. That's a rate of around 1% per year. The cause may be global warming. As a key food item in the ocean, this decline is serious and scary business and may mean a substantial imbalance in the ocean's ecosystem. Number 7. The world's biggest mammal reigns here The behemoth blue whale is a majestic creature that runs up to 98 feet in length and weighs in at a whopping 173 tons. 191 short tons. The whale also boasts a unique U-shaped flathead, a blowhole at the top of the upper lip, flippers that are 10 to 13 feet long, and a small dorsal fin around 11 inches in height. To breathe, the blue whale lifts its shoulder and blowhole from the water when surfacing. Needless to say, this scary big mammoth monster is the largest mammal in existence, bluish gray and lighter in its underbelly. The blue whale reaches this enormous size by eating only small crustaceans, called krill, being that it only eats crustaceans. The blue whale doesn't seem so frightened to us humans. We ain't no krill, but imagine being stranded in the ocean when suddenly its great big shadow casts below you. At least when you pee your pants, only the ocean will know. But don't worry, only rarely will you run into a blue whale nowadays. The 20th century saw a downturn in the ocean's blue whale population because whalers hunted them to near extinction. In 1966, the international community protected them and, in 2002, there were an estimated 5,000 to 12,000 blue whales left in the world's oceans. Today, the number has doubled to an estimated 10,000 to 25,000. Still, the number is significantly lower than the pre-whaling population, which was at an estimate of 202,000 to 311,000. Whalers, greedy much. They are greedy for the blue whale's long tapered body which they use to eat, light lamps, and make tools and other handy items. Number 7. They're teeming with viruses and bacteria Have you ever thought of the world's wet underbelly having health issues? Well, it can and it does, because viruses and bacteria thrive in oceans. Most of them, however, are not dangerous. Rather, they sustain it. Others, not so much. Human and animal health are threatened by certain of these bacteria and viruses. They become particularly threatened to humans in coastal regions and, as per usual, we humans are the problem. Since the dawn of time, we've been using the ocean as a natural diluter to rid of our disposable waste and noxious materials. Runoff of sewage into the ocean waters produces an excess of viral and bacterial microorganisms, leaving the contaminated water a source of disease. In fact, viruses and bacteria causing hepatitis A and E, malaria, and even polio can be found in coastal waters. Marine life develops infections just as easily as humans do, which can result in beached dolphins or whales due to decreased water quality. The worst thing about this scary fact is that water flow and ocean currents can transport the microbes great lengths. Nothing as scary as a traveling virus that can survive days or weeks on the sea. Number 6. The angler fish is angling to lure you. These bony fish are as predatory as they are creepy. In fact, they're named for their predatory nature and the lure that's literally attached in a fleshy growth on their heads. These creepsters angle around the continental shelf and the deep sea. They come in shades of dark brown and gray and sport faces as ugly as sin, with ginormous heads with huge crescent-shaped mouths to match. Their mouths are filled with fang-like teeth which curve in, enabling the angler to snatch its prey quickly. This little fish can weigh in at up to a whopping 100 pounds 
and can grow to be over three feet wide. The female angler are the real evil ones, fitted with the fishing rod, a luminescent luring organ that draws its prey into the darkness of the deep sea. The female angler fish also lures men to mate with it. The luminosity of the lure is due to the symbiotic bacteria that live here. Even sicker, the wide mouth of the angler fish extends nearly all the way around the head circumference, allowing the fish to distend its jaw and its stomach when it takes in prey up to nearly twice its size. Freaky. Number 5. The Deep Sea Monster Lives Down Under If you've ever wondered if the Kraken is real, wonder no more. Prior to a recent discovery, a colossal jagged-toothed air-breathing monster called the Ichthyosaur, which lived in the world's prehistoric oceans, was thought to rule the seas until evidence of a giant kraken was discovered. The mythological creature was once a thing of fisherman folklore, an octopus half the size of an enormous blue whale, one which could chew up and spit out the ichthyosaur like a piece of gum. This kraken is only a theory, however, based on nine 45-foot ichthyosaur remains, stacked in an unexplainable manner. The ichthyosaur were thought to have died in a plankton bloom, but to have done so, they would have had to live in shallow water. The topography of the region, where they were found, suggests that they resided in deep water. It seems they did not die all at once either, and that their bones had been rearranged on purpose. This latter characteristic led to the hypothesis that the ichthyosaur were killed by an octopus-type creature, as octopi stack and rearrange the remains of bones in their dens like so. Octopi are also known killers, as one was videoed killing a shark. Thus, the theory of a giant prehistoric kraken emerged, as Mount Holyoke College paleontologist Mark McMenamin said in a statement, We think that the cephalopod in the Triassic was doing the same thing. It was either drowning them or breaking their necks. Thank God these things aren't around anymore. Or are they? Number 4. Most of the sea is in darkness. We'll never know what exactly is lurking in the ocean. Over 95% of the Earth's living area is a mystery because most of it lies deep beneath the surface of the ocean and is largely unexplored due to the fact that light starts fading fast at around 50 feet. In fact, it only penetrates 330 feet, leaving the rest in darkness, even more detrimental to human exploration. The deeper you go, the more pressure rises and temperature drops. If you live to reach 13,000 feet, you won't see a glimmer of sunshine and the temperature will be near freezing. Below deck is the unknown that we mentioned before. Creatures live here, but we may never meet them. But could we? As technological advances are made, scientists are able to explore these oceanic depths more and more. Depths which average around 12,400 feet deep. Number 3. The Northern Stargazer Gazes Here The Northern Stargazer is a grumpy Gus. Run into him in the depths of the ocean, up to 120 feet, near the shores between New York and North Carolina, and you'll meet face to face with his flat forehead and up to 22 inches of his body, his slimy black-brown, white-spotted body. The scientific name for the stargazer is Astroscopulus Gatatus. Astroscopulus translates to one who aims at the stars and Gatatus to speckled. These both reference the demon fish's general appearance and this appearance is what makes him so scary. Most of the fish's body mass lies near the front end of its mouth, a mouth which faces up, in order for the speckled fish to deceive its prey, as it lays in wait near the ocean's sandy bottom. In fact, it buries itself in the sand to further camouflage itself from its prey, which are usually just smaller fish. Its creepy little eyes peer up through the sand to spot these unlikely fishies, as they're located on top of the stargazer's head, hence the name. Three black horizontal stripes also spread across its white tail, while the orbitae of the fish's top side holds electric organs that can produce an electric shock. The fish also lays tiny transparent eggs at the bay's bottom which float to the ocean surface upon release and hatch into larvae there. After growing from around 0.25 inches to 0.5 inches, they develop their dark shade and their electrical organs, after which they swim to the ocean's bottom, where they dwell the rest of their godforsaken lives. Number 2. The Frilled Shark and Its Primitive Frills Scared of sharks? Check out this frilly one, aptly named the Frill Shark. Located in the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans over the Upper Continental Slope and Outer Continental Shelf, the frilled shark most commonly swims at around 160 to 660 feet, 
but has been caught significantly deeper at 5,150 feet. The primitive features of the shark tend to lend itself the term living fossil, with its eelish body, dark brown tint, and pelvic dorsal and anal fins situated further back. The frill part of the equation appears in its six gill slits, beginning across its throat, giving it a frilled appearance. The lurching shark catches prey by springing forward like a snake. Its jaws are long and flexible, allowing the beast to swallow its prey entirely. Its small needle teeth make it hard for its prey to escape, so fortunately the soft-bodied squid that it goes for stand no chance. They're done for. Before we get to number 1, my name is Chills and I hope you're enjoying the video so far. If you've ever been curious as to what I look like in real life, then follow me on Instagram at DylanIsChillinYT. I also have a Twitter at YTChills where I post video updates. I'd really appreciate it if you followed me and feel free to send me a DM if you have any questions or suggestions. Number 1. The Ocean is Full of the Unknown If you're frightened of the unknown, then don't enter the ocean. Two-thirds of its marine life is said to remain in the dark, darkness that's darker than the human eye can see. While most of this two-thirds isn't anything of huge significance, I mean there probably isn't some enormous sea monster or great white whale looming below, there are certainly mollusks, crustaceans, and other tiny organisms which help maintain the delicate balance of the ocean's ecosystem and don't get any credit for doing so. With between 700,000 and a million species roaming the oceans, it's no wonder that all have not been discovered, named, or described. But that's not without trying. Around 2,000 new marine species are being identified and described each year. The effort in discovering each and every marine creature is an attempt to conserve those species that may be suffering due to pollution. The effort in discovering each and every marine creature is an attempt to conserve those species that may be suffering due to pollution or other means of depopulation. Biodiversity is being lost at a rate upwards of 1,000 times than it should. Knowing the species is vital in any attempt to save them. You can only love something if you know it, marine biologist Ward Appleton's said at the Intergovernmental Oceanographic Commission of UNESCO. We will not save the world with this result, but we may start understanding it better. 